Hello and welcome to the video on secants, tangents, and angle measures. By the end of this video, you should be able to tell me what a secant is, and you should be able to find the measure of an angle, whether the vertex of that angle is on the inside of a circle, outside of the circle, or on a circle. Well, let's start with a definition of a secant. A secant is a line that intersects a circle in exactly two points. So there's a lot of similarities between a secant and a chord. If you remember, a chord was just a line segment that intersected a circle. Well, a secant is really just the extension of that chord. So a line that intersects a circle in exactly two points. So what a chord is to a line segment, a secant would be to a line. I could draw any number of secants in here. I draw another secant that intersects the circle exactly two times. There's a few theorems that go along with this particular section, and each of these next three theorems is all dealing with a different case. Whether or not the angle created here has its vertex inside the circle, outside the circle, or on the circle. This theorem says if two secants or chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the measure of the angle formed is half the sum of the measures of the arcs intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. So a few things to point out here. First of all, notice we have two secants. I have secant AC and secant BD. Those two secants are intersecting here on the inside of the circle. It's not at the center of the circle, but somewhere in, in the circle itself. I've created a couple of different angles here, and I can find the measure of angle one here fairly quickly. All I need is the measure of its arc, and if we look at angle one and follow its rays out, its arc here is arc AD, and its vertical angle's arc. Well, angle one's vertical angle is angle two over here, and angle two's arc is arc BC. So to figure out the measure of angle one, I would say that the measure of angle one is equal to half the sum. If you remember sum here, sum means add them together. So I'm going to add together the two arcs. I'm going to add together angle one's arc, which is arc AD, and angle one's vertical angle's arc, which is angle two's arc, so arc BC. When I add those together, I'm going to then take half of that. So I can times by a half, or in this case, I'm just going to divide by two. Let's try a few examples that go along with this theorem. Example number one, we're going to find the measure of angle one. Well, to do this, I note that angle one's arc is 54 degrees. So I'm going to take that 54 degree arc, and I'm going to add angle one's vertical angle's arc, which is 40 degrees. I'm going to add those together and divide by two. Well, when I do that, I get 94 over two, which is 47 degrees. So the measure of angle one in this case is 47 degrees. The measure of angle, or problem number two, problem number two, I want to find the measure of angle five. This is done pretty much the same way. In this case, though, I'm really going to find a different angle first. Because of the arcs that were given to me, this 92 degree arc and the 130 degree arc, I can figure out this angle right here fairly quickly. That angle is currently unnumbered, but I can figure it out by taking its arc, which is 92, and its vertical angle's arc, which is 130, adding them together and dividing by 2. When I add those together, I get 222 over 2, which is 111 degrees. So I now know that the measure of my unnumbered angle here is 111 degrees. If that's the case, I can find angle 5 fairly quickly because I note that angle 5 and my new 111 degree angles are a linear pair. Linear pairs, remember, way back to the beginning of the year, add up to 180 degrees. So 180 minus the 111 is going to get me a 69 degree angle. That makes the measure of angle 5 69 degrees. Our next theorem says if a secant and a tangent intersect at the point of tangency, then the measure of an angle formed is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. What this theorem is saying is that when I have a tangent, remember a tangent is a line that intersects a circle exactly once, and a secant, that's a line that intersects a circle twice, when they intersect at the point of tangency here, point U, I've created two different angles here. Each of these angles is half 
of the measure of its intercepted arc. Well, angle T U Y then would be equal to half of its arc. And while its arc is this major arc here, so it's half of arc U X Y. So arc U X Y is this major arc. You could do the same thing with the other part of this particular picture. If I wanted to find the measure of angle V U Y, it would be half of minor arc U Y. The concept here should make sense because just like an inscribed angle, the vertex here is on the circle itself. So since an inscribed angle is half the measure of its arc, it should be pretty easy to remember that these angles are also going to be half the measure of their arc. Let's try a few examples for that theorem. Problem number three, find the measure of angle three. Well, angle three here has its vertex on the circle itself. So just like an inscribed angle, it's half the measure of its arc. Half of 220 degrees is 110 degrees. In problem number four, find the measure of angle four. Well, in this picture, I note a few different things here. First of all, this arc right here is 120 degrees. If that arc is 120 degrees, then its angle, which has its vertex on the circle itself, is gonna be half of that. So this angle here has to be 60 degrees. If that's 60 degrees, and I know that this larger angle here was 90, then the measure of angle four has to be the rest of that 90 degree angle or 30 degrees. And one last theorem. This theorem says if I have two secants, a secant and a tangent, or two tangents, that intersect in the exterior of the circle, then the measure of the angle formed is going to be half the difference. Keyword there, difference of the measures of the intercepted arc. So let's look at our first example here. I have an angle called angle APD. The measure of angle APD, because its vertex is outside the circle, is going to be half the difference of the two intercepted arcs. Well, the two arcs of that angle are arc BE and arc AD. I'm going to take those two arcs, and subtract them. Again, the reason I'm subtracting them is because it says it's half the difference. And then I want to divide that by two again. You could also multiply by a half. So the measure of angle APD is half the difference of those two arcs. It works the same way if I have a tangent and a secant. If I have a tangent and a secant, I also have created two intercepted arcs right here. These two arcs are the arcs I'm going to use to find the measure of angle GQH. The measure of that angle is going to be, again, half the difference of the two arcs. Since it's half the difference, I know I'll eventually divide by two here, and the two arcs I need to subtract are arc GJ and arc GH. And the last one is just when two tangents intersect a circle. Well, if I have two tangents that intersect a circle, I again have two arcs. I have a major arc. MTN and a minor arc MN. I am again going to subtract those two arcs and divide by two. After I do that, I know I'll get the measure of angle R. Let's try two more examples here. Find the measure of angle one. Well, again, I notice angle one has its vertex outside the circle, so I know I'm going to have to subtract these two arcs and divide by two. Its two arcs are 70 and 40. 70 minus 40 is 30, and 30 over 2 is 15 degrees. That means the measure of angle 1 has to be 15 degrees. Problem number 10, figure out what x is. This problem is done very much the same way, but this time I have my angle. Because the angle's vertex is outside the circle, the difference of those two arcs divided by 2 has to equal that angle. So in this case, I'm missing the arc, but I can still set up the equation the same way. The bigger of those two arcs minus the smaller arc, 80 minus x divided by 2, has to equal the measure of my angle. Now to solve this out, I just need to solve for x. Solve my equation, I'm going to times by 2 on both sides. I get 80 minus x is 40. Then subtract the 80. To get the opposite of x is equal to a negative 40. And when I divide or multiply by a negative 1, I get x is 40 degrees. And that is the end of our video on secants, tangents, and angle measures. Have a wonderful day.